wherever you may be, however you are listening, thank you so much for tuning in to another edition of the All Cardinals Podcast. My name is Donnie Druin, joined every week by my main man, Richie Bradshaw. Before we get into the nitty-gritty, go to follow us on Twitter, or as the cool kids call it, X. Uh, me, at Donnie Druin, and then Richie, at Richie Brads 36 uh, Richie, the Super Bowl was this past weekend. I'm sure everybody enjoyed a phenomenal, phenomenal game. Uh, 2023 is officially in the books. We can officially put our sights forward to 2024 uh today we're going to talk about a couple of different needs of positions for the arizona cardinals what maybe they can prioritize what maybe they can hang back on a little bit uh, we have four position groups we think that can really really use an upgrade over the next couple months whether that be in free agency or the 2024 nfl draft but before we get into it how are you uh tired from working an overnight but you know what i'm good and when i get the call to talk football there's uh there's no better phone call in the world donnie let's be honest so yeah, do you do you know you and... um so, sorry, really quick, do you know how you know if somebody works overnights? When they, when they look homeless? No, on we, a no, podcast? <laughs> no, they'll uh, they'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's like uh like how do you know someone does CrossFit? Don't no, worry, they'll tell you. Yeah, 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 don't worry. <laughs> Shout out Connor. Shout out to Connor, but yeah, man, no, I'm super happy to be back. Obviously, um, if you know a little bit about allcardinals.com and the si.com domain, you'll kind of understand why we had to take a little bit of a hiatus, but uh, maybe we took a little bit of our own offseason, kind of, you know, regroup, refresh ourselves. I know you've been pumping out crazy content over at Locked on Sun Devils. Locked on Sun Devils, forks up, baby. But we are here to talk about the National Football League today, specifically the Arizona Cardinals. Richie, there's four position groups um, we feel like really can use an upgrade for the Cardinals. Um, I don't want to put these in order necessarily. Maybe at the end we can kind of go back and forth on maybe which one they should really prioritize. Uh, first and foremost, though, this is a heavy talking point um, in all of Cardinals' Twitter, social media, people at bars, wherever you may have it. The wide receiver position desperately needs upgraded for the Cardinals. You have Marquise Brown set the hinter free agency. You don't know if he's going to be coming back. You don't know what he wants potentially on the open market. After that, you have a uh, rookie, Michael Wilson, who was banged up for a lot of his um, you know first campaign in the NFL. Rondell Moore, Greg Dortch, um, Zach Pascal. Maybe I can't remember if he set the enter free agency or not. But regardless, even if Marquise Brown does come back, it really feels like the Cardinals do need another premier weapon for a now healthy Kyler Murray going into 2024. Um, dude, you see the mocks everywhere. Obviously, Marvin Harrison Jr. is a guy they could really, really love and run to the podium if he's there at number four. Um, just a lot of talk about T. Higgins, a lot of talk about maybe going to get um, Michael Pittman Jr. If, if he's not franchise tagged. So many different ways, so many different avenues they can go with this. Uh, before we get into maybe some potential targets, I mean, it, it's it, this is a slam dunk, right? Like wide receivers should absolutely be addressed at some point in the offseason. Well, and especially when you're talking about a generational prospect and Marvin Harrison Jr. that's going to be available to you. Like, I know that term gets thrown around a lot, but let's take a look at Marvin Harrison Jr. Massive production in the last two years, including a Bolitnikoff Award, All-American status, uh, it was one of the best Ohio State Buckeye receivers of the last 10 years. And if we look at that resume, that is incredibly impressive. But then beyond that, he's big. He's 6'4". He's going to be running sub 4'5", maybe even sub 4'4". The dude is a freak athlete who jumps out of the gym. He He looks the part of not just the number one receiver, but just one of those freaks you build in the lab. Like, I won't call him Calvin Johnson or Randy Moss or anything yet, but God, he, he feels like that kind of prospect right now. And when you have a guy of that caliber available to you and you have a need at that position, oh my gosh, Donnie, it's, it's, it's just so easy to plug and play that kind of, that kind of player for you. And when you look at, the situation the Cardinals are in, right? They have been needing a number one receiver for pretty much the majority of the Kyler Murray era. Like you've had, you've had him play on the last legs of Larry Fitzgerald and you had DeAndre Hopkins come in and Hopkins did look good when he was available, but yeah. part of the problem is he wasn't available. And then this last year, it was incredibly evident that the Cardinals just had no answers at the receiver spot. So you look at, 
the opportunity to bring in a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr. And you almost wonder if he instantly becomes the best player that Kyler's thrown to. And like, I'll, I'll tell you right now, obviously DeAndre is, but you did Larry? not get what Larry. Well, he played with Larry for one year. Okay. That that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, obviously Larry clears. Okay. But Just getting that yeah, out the way. Nope. hundred percent. Glad you brought that up. Um, but with DeAndre, I mean, you you got one of his best seasons, but the other two seasons, he just wasn't on the field for one reason or another. So you have yet to see Kyler Murray really establish connection with a true dynamic and dominant number one receiver. Marvin Harrison Jr. can be that for you. It's a need. It's It's a good value here, if not an elite value, and it's an elite overall prospect. This is... Yeah, I, I- this almost makes too much sense, right? Like, like rarely when you mock Absolutely. draft does like need and fit kind of like intersect with each other. An MHJ to the Cardinals just makes sense for so many reasons. I mean, I feel like we don't have enough time to really get into it. Um, you've seen what younger guys like a Jamar Chase, like a Justin Jefferson can do for the respective offenses. And if you throw a guy like Marvin Harrison Jr. into a Cardinals offense that can run the ball very, very well, we'll, certainly have James Conner back in, in the fold next year, a healthy Kyler Murray. And then you pair MHJ with, um, you know, a, a Michael Wilson heading into his second season who, you know, hopefully has the the grasp of being a pro underneath him. Um, hopefully has his body and his health really in check too, moving into 2024. You add him, you add Trey McBride into the fold. And if you can just get like one other solid, like wide receiver three to put in the Arizona and hoping that Greg Dorch can maybe produce, maybe hoping that Rondell Moore can have a breakout season you really have to like your chances of what the Cardinals can do, at least offensively heading to into next season. But that, that starts with getting a premier playmaker. And that is exactly what Marvin Harrison Jr. is. And I know um, you just said you don't really like to throw like the generational label out. It's tough, but what I will say is when your father is a legitimate Hall of Fame player and you are the better prospect coming out of college than he is, that says something. That really says something about you. So um, I, I don't want the the expectations or the, the hype to get too, too high because we've yet to see him step on an NFL football field. Obviously, anything can happen. But, man, if if you're going to put all of your eggs in one basket, this is the basket I would put them in. Yeah, this is definitely the one, at least until uh, his brother ends up coming through because apparently uh, Jet Harrison, first of all, elite name, uh, apparently Jet Harrison is better than Marvin uh, per Marvin. Himself. Really? So he's, he's not even in college yet. So that's it's going to be, sick. it's going to be a little bit of time, but come on, dude, Jet Harrison. That's pretty sick. That's, Jet Maserati. That's a, a stop. That's a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the next position group, sticking with the offense, actually offensive line. And I feel like this might be, um, I don't want to say overlooked, but it's not exactly like a sexy thing to address, right? Like it's not going to sell is. jerseys. It's not going to get people in the stands at State Farm Stadium. But it will protect Kyler Murray. It will help the Cardinals continue to run the football better. And, um, you know, left tackle will probably need um, somebody there. The team has yet to officially cut DJ Humphreys, but he did tear. Um, I think it was an ACL or an MCL. I forget which one. But it was a very serious knee injury at the end of 2023 was already a cut candidate before that due to his age and his cap hit. And then the Cardinals just had a rotating door at left guard. They really couldn't find an answer for that. Um, they've got the right side locked down. If Paris Johnson Jr. does indeed stay there, they also have Will Hernandez at right guard too. Uh, Yadi Furholt played fine at, at center last season. Um, so you've, you've pretty much right now as we stand here, got the right side of the line locked down. Um, and even if they flip Paris Johnson Jr. over to, to left tackle, you're still going to need a pretty decent right tackle too. Um, especially in a league today where like you see a lot of premier edge rushers line up over the right tackle as opposed to the, the left, which is kind of what we grew up um, watching in terms of football. But overall, man, um, this one is going to be pretty high for me. If Marvin Harrison Jr. is not there at number four and the Cardinals don't put like significant draft, not cap, um, significant like for agent capital into the offensive line. I wouldn't be mad at like Joe Walt or like Olu Fashanu um, there at like number four as well. They might even trade back, but uh, I'll stop rambling. But the, the offensive line definitely needs a, a couple new faces moving into 2024. 
they they just you feel like you gotta at least upgrade one major spot along the offensive line and it's probably tackle and he, here's the thing let me let me throw this scenario at you let's say for some reason the the cardinals miss out on marvin harrison jr right so you'll have you'll have quarterback one and two and then let's say i don't know chicago moves up from six to three with the Patriots. that's a theory to to get him dude that, it, that's it, a it, rumor it absolutely is so you decide to move down a few picks so someone can come up and get a quarterback. I know that Paris Johnson was really quality at right tackle, but if I threw this scenario at you to move him to left tackle and take Talisi Fuaga to plug at right tackle, what do you think? Because at number four, I, I, no, 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 you would move down. You would move down. Okay. Someone okay. would move up to get a quarterback. I wouldn't hate it. The The cool thing about where the Cardinals are at is there's so many holes they need to plug in. Like there, there's not like a, unless it's Marvin Harrison Jr. There's not like a slam dunk prospect at number four. Right. You know, they, they need, we're, we're going to talk about these in a little bit, but like defensive line corner, um, like edge rusher, like there's just like, even like inside linebacker a little bit later in the draft. I mean, there's so many spots they need to like really upgrade and add depth and, um, it, it's like for a second year in a row, cause we were sitting here last year, whenever they're picking at number three and we were saying, Hey, if they take Will Anderson jr. Great. If they move down also great, because there's just, there's so much that needs to be fixed. And they, they hit the nail on their head for majority of the draft class last year. I thought they had the okay for agency, um, but they trimmed a, a lot of the fat off the roster and, you know, heading into the second year of Monty Austin Ford's reign in Arizona, this is where you kind of need to start like continuing that production of finding players, trusting your process and uh, regardless of position, just like drafting guys that are going to contribute. Let me ask you a question. Oh, my. Little, little off topic. Okay. If Marvin Harrison Jr. is available at four and the Cardinals pass or like trade down. Okay. Even if it's getting an offensive lineman or whatever, what is the, what is the level of disappointment that you would have? Obviously the fans would be furious. Yeah, they, they they would probably be protesting outside of State Farm Stadium. Um, I I would really need to see what they do in the second and third round. Um, I feel like a lot of people get so caught up in just round one when the draft is seven rounds long. Right. And there's just so much draft capital for the Cardinals heading into 2024. Um, it's really a puzzle, and the first piece obviously is going to be the biggest, but that doesn't mean the puzzle is complete or incomplete. After you put that first puzzle piece down, there needs to be other additional pieces to help complete and fill the picture out. That all depends for me. And I would really need to see what the rest of that draft looks like in order for me to say, okay, you know what? I think they made a good call. Um, thoughts change. Information changes. So, so much Rishi. As we sit here today, I, I think I would, I would not pass on Marvin Harrison Jr. I, I just wouldn't, man. Nope. I, I get you. Um, you you would just have to be offered like some kind of killer deal, man. Yeah. Like and would you get that picks. at number four with all three quarterbacks off of the board? No, no, yeah. because if if three quarterbacks go off the board and someone calls you, they're calling for Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm-hmm. So and at, at that point, I mean it, it really does get to a point where it's like do you want to take an elite prospect or do you want to like it's family guy, a boat's a boat, but the mystery box could be anything. It could even be a boat boat. like Marvin Harrison jr. Is Marvin Harrison jr. But this extra first round pick could be anything. Yeah. My Marvin Harrison jr. I I'm normally a big fan, depending on the trade of moving back and trying to accumulate an extra draft capital. I felt what Austin Fort did last year to get that extra first round pick was really, really good. Um, Even at, if it ended up being at pick number 27, the first round, it's still next to first round pick. Like right. I, I still think you make that deal 10 times out of 10 um, with that knowledge and not having the the hindsight ability that we have today. Let me ask you this though. Um, MHJ goes off the board at three Cardinals take either alt or Fashanu at number four. I mean, it, those, those are still great guys to add to your roster, you know, dude, hundred percent. And I mean, the offensive line is so important. And you've mentioned it, and it has been said 
a million times to the point where like it's almost it's almost uh what's the word like cliche redundant. to say gotcha. redundant too yeah dumb that... sexing taylor swift on the tv oh yeah 54 seconds <laughs> uh all the memes that have gone with that dude are amazing but um the the cliche right is the ooh drafting offensive line isn't sexy we've said it now Yep. And it truly is the stigma that like nobody wants that. Why? Well, no one's buying an offensive lineman's jersey. Nobody's nobody's, you know, getting freaked out because oh my god, look, we just drafted Joe Alt Jr. over Marvin Harrison Jr. Like get the champagne people aren't going nope. to be yeah, no. But at the end of the day, it and, and you feel like Cardinal fans would know this best is there has not been a good offensive line in a long time. Like the best I can think of was 2015 when he had Mike Upati and Jared Veld here. But guess what? Those were pre agent additions. Like they have not done a good job drafting, developing guys. And if you went back to back years and got yourself bookend tackles, you just can't be upset with that. And you also have to remember it is a really, really deep receiver class. Like mm -hmm. you're talking you could get at the end of the first round or top of the second round, my draft darling, Troy Franklin. You yeah. could take a look at one. Hey, of that's the a Texas popular kids. one, man. Yeah. Oh, dude. I, I was talking to our buddy Austin the other night and uh, every year there's going to be, you know, two or three guys that you get on the table and fight for. And, Troy Troy Franklin is my guy. Like if I were in a draft, you actually room, put I'd, that in your mock draft available on all, uh, all Cardinals.com. I did. Yeah. yeah he did. That's, that's my dude. He is, it's, it's a handful of guys and Buaga is one of them too, which is why I brought him up. But if, if you walked away with, with Joe Alt jr. And another good player in the first round and then a receiver in the second round, whether that's Franklin, whether it's Adnai, uh, Mitchell or Xavier Worthy or Xavier Legay, like there are so many guys here, man. Like, yeah. don't don't worry about offensive line not being sexy because at the end of the day, there's nothing sexier than keeping your quarterback upright so he can throw strikes down the field, mm -hmm. and that's sexy. So, yeah, ask Joe Burrow. Like, it just <laughs> he knows. Jamar Chase is awesome. I'm sure he wishes he had a little more protection. Not that you regret that pick. It's just. No. No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the other side of the trenches, defensive line. And, um, you know, we, we said a lot of good things about the Cardinals offense and what it can be. A lot left to be desired about the Arizona Cardinals defense in 2023, which is not surprising. I don't want to say it, but when, when you brought guys on like Jonathan Gannon and Nick Rallis, um, you would have hoped for there to be a little bit uh, better of production, but um, you know, you you cut a first round pick and Isaiah Simmons. Sorry, you, you traded him, um, and then you you saw just injury after injury along that uh, front seven. Buda Baker even spent some time on injured reserve too. Um, you had to end up cutting Marco Wilson, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. But overall, man, um, especially in the in the Jonathan Gannon led defense. Everything starts up front in the trenches, and if you can control the line of scrimmage on the defensive side of the football, that frees up the linebackers, that that, that frees up the pass coverage and, and the secondary too. Just so many things start at the point of attack if you're a defensive lineman. And the Cardinals right now, as we sit here, Buda Baker, Jalen Thompson, I will hear arguments for Kaiser White. I am crazy high on him. Me too. He's not exactly a household name. He should be, but he's not. Not yet. That's it. That's it. The, the Cardinals have no guys up front. They have no game records. I'm not saying you need to go out and get four Aaron Donalds, although that would be phenomenal, but you need somebody to wreak havoc along the, along the defensive line. And when, when your best defensive lineman is Jonathan Ledbetter, you, you got to upgrade somehow. You have yep. to upgrade somehow. So I know that there's a couple guys in a draft. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's not a top heavy defensive line edge draft somewhere around there. Um, I, I did want to include edge in the defensive line. I, I know it's a separate position group, but all the same. 
Oh, I thought you still had something to say. No, no, it's... It's surprisingly, no. <laughs> Not this time? <laughs> no. <laughs> so the way I see this draft is like you may not have a blue chip guy, but there's like two, three, four guys that are like plug and play starters. And funny enough, one of them is pictured and the other one was his teammate are the kids at Texas. And you got Byron Murphy Jr. Not to be confused with the corner that the Cardinals previous had. And also not his son. It'd be pretty crazy for, you know, the five year age difference between the two. We're we're gonna see LeBron and uh, and Bronny maybe playing the NBA together next year. So, yeah, dude, when Bronny goes undrafted, but that's a topic for Locked On Sun Devils. But uh, <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. He's not good. <laughs> but would you? But there's no like top ten like defensive line guys. There, there's no like Jalen Carter's in this draft. Is what you're saying? No, I mean. Okay. Uh, Jerzon Newton is an absolute ass kicker and to me is one of the best values in the draft because based off of the position he plays, you, you do see those guys go top 15. I've seen him fall out of the first round and I think that's absolutely bonkers, but between him, Byron Murphy and Tavondre Sweat, the other Texas kid, I very very premature because we're two and a half months away. I would be disappointed if the Cardinals didn't walk away with one of those three after their first three picks. What Depending if, on the rest of the board, I would be disappointed if they didn't walk away with one of those three. Would you be upset if they went and spent money in free agency? Like they, Christian Wilkins? Yes. Well, then no. I mean... Uh, that's the other thing. Like I said, like we're we're two and a half months out. There, yeah. There's a lot of things that are going to change. The Cardinals could get a Christian Wilkins or they could find somebody else Matt that's Bouquet. in free agency. Hmm? Justin Matabuke? You stop that right now. Okay. You keep right. my yep. man's name right. out of your mouth. Okay. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> that would but, be a really good get, though. Nah, I, I think any of those two guys, I mean, th- there's talk of – they're not going to be able to, but if they can somehow land both, um, Wilkins is probably looking at like 25 a year somewhere. He's resetting there. the market. And yeah, Matabuike is probably also resetting the market. Yeah. So that it's a nice dream, but there's just no way the Cardinals can get both of those guys. Um, it's but let's like say I they said, get, I, it's like I've, I've said, like, I would love to get, uh, Christian Wilkins and, and Brian Burns, but it's the same thing. And one of them's an edge rusher. So it, it's just tough. Like you can you can want top of the market guys all day till you're blue in the face. But even for a team that's got a lot of cap space, you got to realize you can't just keep resetting the market with guys unless so, they're your homegrown kids. So since since we're already kind of looping edge and defensive line together here, um, let, let, let's do talk a little bit about getting to the passer because the Cardinals didn't do a whole lot of that in 2023. I, I believe they ranked it at least near the bottom of the league and just in terms of sacks. Um, I'm not sure about the the advanced pressures, analytics, or anything like that. But um, B.J. Ojolari, who came on strong at the end of last season, you still have Dennis Gardeck there, who can produce. Um, you know, he's not going to be an all-pro for you. Um, really quick, I don't want to get a tangent on it, because I, I do think we should do another podcast on this. Zayvon Collins needs to go back to the inside. And that is not slander for Zayvon Collins himself, trying to play as an edge rusher. I thought he played fine as an inside linebacker in 2022. And they just said, hey, you're big and you're fast. You could probably be an edge rusher when he has no moves in the toolbox and just right. threw him in there on the fly. And he was great in run support. He, he was tremendous at setting the edge and backside run support. But in terms of getting to the passer, which is kind of a prerequisite to play edge rusher in the National Football League. More I'm just often a dude, than not. Yeah, I'm just a dude behind the microphone. Um he didn't do a lot of that. And so what I think defensive line is going to be a big need. And I think edge is also going to be a bigger need. Um, Brian Burns has been the, the popular name. Hassan Reddick has been in trade rumors recently. Do you think Dude, about... I would do it? I would do I it. Think do. I think, I, get him under, I get him with Gannon again. Oh yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like if, if anybody knows how to like fit that puzzle piece together, it's Jonathan Gannon. Dude, and the Crowless too. Yeah. Right. And, so many people that I have seen 
are like, oh, I don't know. He's really close to 30 and this, that, and the other. And it's like, That's fair. he has had four consecutive double-digit sack seasons with three different teams. He has found a niche. He knows what he's doing. You're getting him back with a guy who got him 16, 17 sacks, whatever it was, in 2022. And you can say he's almost 30, whatever. He's an edge rusher. He's not a running back. You can still get four, maybe five quality years at worst out of him. And he's still not getting paid a buttload of money. Like yeah. this isn't a guy who's making 30 a year. He, I, I think he's making like 15, if I'm not mistaken. Like this isn't someone that you're going to be stressed out about. How do we, how do we get him to fit into our cap uh, pretty easily? So I, I would have no problem. In fact, I would implore the Cardinals to go and do that because it would push your needs around everywhere else. You you go into the draft. Let's say you got Hassan Reddick and some kind of uh some some kind of defensive back, I guess. Okay. And you know, let's say Jalen Johnson. Cool. So yeah, you're able to get those two. And you go into the draft and now you are able to take Marvin Harrison Jr. with that first pick and then go best player available with that second pick, which could lead to Newton or Murphy or Sweat or whoever else tickles your fancy along the interior of the defensive line. So to me, Hassan Reddick is like a slam dunk pick and I would not be upset parting with the top 100 pick for him. I, I really wouldn't. I don't think I could have said it better myself. Uh, moving on to the final uh, position, obviously any team that finishes with a 4-13 and 13 record can use a lot of upgrades, but um, perhaps not last, bigger. certainly not least the cornerback position. Um, three rookies featured prominently for the Cardinals last year in Starling Thomas, Keetra Clark, and Garrett Williams. Um, I'm really excited for what Garrett Williams can do with a full offseason underneath Me him. Too. I thought Keetra Clark... Um, Played well, given that he was thrown into the fire as a day three pick right away. Um, I'm, I'm excited to see how he can kind of like sharpen his iron. Um, and then like um, Starling Thomas, just stud, stud, made, made plays whenever they needed him to. Um, but you're going to need more help there. Marco Wilson now out of town, which probably was for the best. And um, I mean, dude, you, you know, just like being in the media, it, it sucks whenever you like know these guys and you talk to these guys and like you get to know them a little bit and you're like, oh man, like, they're really cool. And then like something happens and everybody's just slandering them and it's like, well, like oh, I hate that. Yeah, it it I get it. Me, me and Marco weren't like buddies, but like we were pretty cool. Like we would talk like somewhat often. Um, so Did I'm he ever certainly you, please? no, no, he gave me tremendous music recommendations though I, I cannot express how good his music taste is not that that counts for anything or people like fucking care about that but, like it is what it is um yeah no i, I didn't he go on a podcast and say his only regret was not throwing that yeah so far dude there. yeah they were like do you regret doing that and he's like i i would have thrown it further that that is one of the funniest cold moments i've ever ever heard on a podcast cold-blooded dude like you said like oh my god i remember seeing that and i i had to talk to everybody i knew about it i was like this is <laughs> this is pretty great and unfortunately a good friend of the uh of the podcast logan is not mm -hmm. a fan of marco wilson because of that yeah but we, we won't get into why but definitely no. so the, the cardinals need help um, dude, I've seen Jalen Johnson thrown around. I've seen uh, Lejerry Sneed thrown around. When Both when you great. look at corners, and I, I liked how in your mock draft, which I, I have to link in the description below, just because we've referenced it a couple times. There's no true cornerback one. There's no consensus like, hey, if you need a corner, this is kind of your guy. Um, the Cardinals could be in position with pick number twenty-seven to either move up or move down for like a, a, one of the like CB two, CB three areas. Um, it, it's a need. It, it's certainly a need. I think this comes back to the the age old discussion: Would you rather address pass rush or would you rather address the secondary? Um, if you ask any football coach, they'll give you a political answer. They'll say they they work hand in hand because they do. Um, 
where does this position rank for you? It, it, is it high in terms of what the Cardinals should address? It might be the top. Really? You okay. just could not get consistent play at the position. And I, I do love what's there. Big Garrett Williams guy. Yeah. There are pieces in place, but you need a number one corner. And look at your division. Because not only does every team have a number one receiver, they have a number two receiver. Yep. You've you've got DK JSN in Seattle. Probably Tyler Lockett, but who knows what the future holds there. Some teams are even three deep. Right? Yeah, like them. And then you've got uh, San Francisco has Debo and Ayuk. And the Rams have Puka, Cooper, potentially Tutu. That's just your division. That's six, six times. times. Yep. Yep. That you need to find a way to be able to get those guys clamps. And that is anything but easy. So while you do have quality guys, you don't have a number one guy. And that's not to say you need to get another Patrick Peterson because that's not realistic. But you do need to find somebody that is able to uh, track and follow guys or at a minimum, just be able to take care of his side of the field. That's where you plug in a Nate Wiggins or a Kool-Aid McKinstry or a Terry and Arnold or insert Quinshawn Mitchell or whoever. Like there, there's a lot of guys that you could take. I do not recommend taking one in the top 10, but literally any of those guys besides Terry and Arnold, because his strap draft stocks are going crazy right now. Literally any of them could be available at 27, or if you wanted to trade up. The title of this video is what is the Cardinals biggest off season need? I wasn't super sure myself coming into it. It's kind of why I wanted to get this out in the open with you talk about maybe the different position groups. And at the end of the podcast, which is literally right now, um, I was going to ask you what you thought the biggest off season need was. I'd go corner. Um, you, you might have just talked me into it. You really might have just talked me into it. I, I think you have some pieces of the offensive line figured out. Um, you can feel comfortable signing a, a decent free agent in there and feeling okay about your line moving forward. Um, defensive line and edge, I, I think you certainly need a little bit more help. Wide receiver, I mean, it, it's there for the taking with you at, at number four. I, I think it will be addressed – Dude, you look at that corner room. You need a dog. You need a dog. You need a couple. Big you dog. need a couple. Um, I, I think you sold me. I, I really think you just sold me. I, I As we sit here today, February 13th, day before Valentine's Day, they might not spend the most money on it. They might not spend the most draft capital on it. But, I mean, corner is probably the most glaring need on this team. They just need capable bodies in that room, man. And then right. you, you pair that with the the potential of the the three rookies we talked about, uh, Thomas Williams and Clark. <sighs> a lot of room for improvement. It, it says something about the room when Marco was your number one corner and he gets cut, and then it's like Antonio Hamilton, who phenomenal guy, tremendous human being, um, is not a starting corner in the National Football League, and that's very, very okay. That's not slandering him at all. Yeah, you you did it. Congrats. Cheers. I do my best every once in a while. I know what I'm talking about. More often than not, I just keep talking until someone tells me to stop, and then even then, I'm probably not stopping. Really quick, though, I do want to go through some um, just underrated needs. Like we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. Um, I'm going to shoot some like positions at you. You can just tell me what you think. Backup quarterback. There's a lot of talk about Clayton Toon maybe not being the most capable guy to be ready if Kyler goes down next year in 2024. Would you be okay with signing maybe like a like a tenured vet to sit behind Kyler, like just in case? Yeah, I wouldn't have any problem with that. I think you, I think you need to look for a guy no matter what. And there's, here's the thing. People can say all day, like, oh, well, having a good backup quarterback is everything. But that's just not true because they're the backup. 
So you can you can flex like we have the best backup quarterback in the league, but mm-hmm. the fact of the matter is that the backup quarterback is coming out, your team is going to drastically step backwards unless you're talking like Nick Foles on the 2017 uh, Eagles or something like that. Like yeah. you are you are not looking at having the best backup quarterback in the league. You need somebody who is efficient and effective enough. The Cardinals don't have that right now, and that's that's bad. So they need to find somebody to bring All right, in. Tight end, tight end too. We obviously know what Trey McBride can do. Budding star. I mean, he's he's easily one of the best players at the position right now, heading into his third year. Um, Cardinals do like to run the football a lot. They they need a solidified blocker. They love the uh, the the twelve personnel sets. Um, where does a backup tight end kind of fall into priorities? Obviously, you're not spending a bunch of money. You're not spending top tier draft capital on it. But would you be upset if they if they brought another stud in to kind of be one A one B with Trey McBride? It would depend on the money because that okay. that is so far down my list. I'm not saying you go get needs. like a like a. I I get what you're saying. I'd be, I'd be cool if they brought Swain back. I thought Jeff Swain played fine yeah. last year. What's Max Williams doing? Hmm. <laughs> Probably still recovering. Yeah. Love you, Max. Mad Max. Mad Max. What a great guy. Um, Yeah, no, that, that's about it. I, I think uh, Michael Carter did good enough to kind of solidify himself. I can't talk today. Solidify himself. Cardinals, as... Wide receiver one, Michael Wilson. Michael Carter. Oh, Carter. Yeah. Sorry. He's living in my head. I just yeah, think so of you Michael on Wilson, draft worry. night. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, right, I don't man. think uh, you need to worry about running back too much either. So, yeah. I would agree. And any closing thoughts, Donnie? Tomorrow's Valentine's Day, and I just want you to know that I know it's kind of cheesy, but you got a pizza, my heart. Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the All Cross <laughs> Podcast. My name is Donnie Drew, enjoyed every week by my main man, Richie Bradshaw. Go to follow us on Twitter, or as the cool kids like to call it, X at Richie Brads36 at Donnie Drew, and follow our work at allcardinals.com or si.com slash NFL slash Cardinals. You all have a piece of our heart. Happy oh, Valentine's Day. Yeah, I did it. Mother. Happy Valentine's Day. It is uh, very, very good to be back in front of the microphone spewing absolute nonsense in, uh, in front of the, the great Cardinals audience with one of my best friends. And uh, plenty more stuff on the way, my man. We, we got the combine coming up. And before you know it, the NFL draft will be here. So uh, first of many videos of the 2024 offseason. But long road ahead. Until then, peace. Curse.